Welcome to our viewers today. Thank you for joining us for our webinar, How to Boost Revenue with S3 Compatible Object Storage. Joining us today are Douglas Henderson, Sales Manager for ThinkOn, and Sanjay Jagged, Senior Director of Products and Solutions at Cloudian. Hello, Laura. Thank you very much. Um, so, you know, it is very interesting when you see the results of this poll, right? You know, and I think that is pretty much where we are right now. Like, you know, the the industry is going through a, a lot of churn right now, especially on the storage side, right? You know, and if you look at where the challenges are, right? You know, the poll gave us a very good uh, indication of uh, what the challenges are faced um, by a lot of our customers as well as the IT practitioners, right? Now, the 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 amount of data that we need to to be managed now is is unprecedented, right? You know, we are in this stage right now where the data is growing leaps and bounds, right? You know, there is this uh, adage that we often hear nowadays in the industry where data is the new oil or data is the new currency, data is the king, and it's all about the data. So when you look at this particular chart, it tells you why why people are saying this, right? So if you look at it, ninety percent of the world's data is was created in the last two years and this is just the start of it right and if you look at these curves that have been predicted by the by almost every leading analyst or the industry expert it is it is evident that this is just the start of that huge steep rise in the way the data gets generated right you know be it uh, through the use cases around IoT, which is your sensors, your devices, your day-to-day -day, uh, mobile devices, your cars, or be it social media, right? You know, we are living in this day and age where most of the data is something that we append. We are living in this day and age where you are going to continuously keep adding, 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 Whereas in the old days, it was more about uh, accessing data, modifying it, and using it for some other business purposes. So there is definitely this unprecedented change. And uh, the poll rightly says that. I know it's, it's a challenge. How do you manage this data tsunami? How do you take care of this, especially when you have, are faced with uh, very fixed IT budgets or you have a very stringent requirements around cutting cost? Um, and leveraging, uh, and while doing that, still making sure that the data that you are generated that you want to use is secure. It aligns with the governance laws and compliance aspect of your individual enterprises. And this is something that we plan to talk about. How do we go about addressing this needs? Not only right now, but uh, moving forward in the future. So let's talk about a little bit about uh, where is this data coming from, right? So as I mentioned earlier, right, uh, data is coming from literally everywhere, right? You know, you have your traditional applications that uh, generate huge amount of data that needs to be backed up and archived, and you have rules and regulations on how long you need to keep this data around, be it five years, seven years, 10 years, and make it accessible for various reasons. And then you talk about, uh, as the science uh, 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 advances, we're talking about uh, uh, data that has been generated through some bio uh, health life sciences or research data that, uh, no, that generates tons and tons of this data, be it your traditional industries around oil and gas, where you want to now create all this data that has been generated now, create intelligence out of it, right? You know, you're trying to look for that small parts of data so that you can derive some meaning valuable insights into that data. You're talking about data which is uh, around uh, security, right? You know, every camera is on the road now, like, you know, our police cameras where you have uh, those cameras for video surveillance, right? This is huge amount of data. And if you look at it, the quality of this media is also growing, right? You know, you're talking about uh, 3D, you're talking about uh, uh, high definition 4K videos, right? You know, uh, media and entertainment, you're talking about this digital assets, be it movies, studios, 
even the way this data has been consumed by the end users is no longer just television. It's like all the social media, the endpoints and those devices, so transcoding. Um, and not to forget, uh, not everybody has the budgets to set up their own data center. So we are talking about an ability to consume this particular storage resources as a service so that you can accommodate this growth with your limited IT budgets. So the poll rightly talks about uh, where the challenges are to manage this unprecedented data, do it in a way that you're aligned and compliant with the governance uh, and the sovereignty of the data, but also do it with a very, uh, a very limited scope when it comes to your budget and IT resources. And this is where the storage as a service and the localized uh, service providers who offer these services are very important. Not everybody can go to public cloud for various reasons, right? Even if you want to, there is a way to figure out how do you get to that public cloud. So those are the challenges that uh, we see in our, in our, in our world today. Um, the biggest challenge, if you look at it, that IT practitioners are always under the pressure is to accommodate this growth, right? So managing this growth, making sure the data is accessible as and when needed is not easy, right? You know, as data growth continues, right, you know, to outpace the growth of the IT budgets, you now uh, are faced with different challenges. Growth creates new storage challenges and the traditional storage devices, like, right? you know, you're talking about your SANS, NAS environments, are not adequate to manage and accommodate this growth, right? You know, I know it, it's it's difficult to first of all grow your storage environment. It's difficult to manage that environment, especially with your limited budgets. Um, and uh, this is this is one area where uh, Cloudian comes in. So, what is Cloudian have to offer? Cloudian basically uh, provides an enterprise grade uh, storage solution uh, for your on-prem, private, or hybrid cloud. Um, its flagship product, if you can see in this particular slide, um, the HyperStore is we are the only S3 compatible storage platform that enables uh, petabyte of scale, right now, so you can seamlessly grow it's uh, it offers a standardized access to manage your data which is basically now become a de facto when it comes to object storage is s3 like you know if you look at most of the public clouds right now or any object storage platform we talk about uh, accessing that data via s3 s3 is no longer just a, a service it's becoming more like a, uh, an API, but also a protocol, right? You know, similar in the similar lines of NFS. So when people talk about accessing storage, traditionally they would talk about SIFS, NFS, iSCSI, but S3 has become a part of it. And that's because that is the only way you can access this huge uh, scale, petabyte scale of storage in a very cost effective way. And the reason why this is very important is because of the use cases that we talked about, right? The data is uh, generated and needs to be managed, be it through your data protection needs for backup and archive, be it for your rich metadata, uh, uh, rich media files around media and entertainment, video surveillance, or for um, a service provider who wants to offer uh, Amazon-like uh, services, um, but making sure that it's done for uh, for localized access or making sure that it's uh, within the governance pieces so that uh, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, security in the cloud. Um, it's not just about the technology, but it also needs to be proven within the enterprise development deployments, right? So we have been uh, proven in one of the uh, in some of the most uh, uh, highly um, important in terms of uh, making sure that the data is always online, but the environment is highly scalable, but and it's always available, right? You know, we're talking about high durability of the data, which is about 14 nights. So all these things makes Cloudian an ideal solution for this growing needs around growth security 
and a low cost effective way to manage your growth. So talking about a little bit about uh, the feature sets, right? And I mentioned earlier um, that Cloudian offers uh, the only storage platform that offers 100% uh, native S3 access to data. And in fact, we provide the highest uh, compatibility when it comes to the S3 APIs uh, and access to data. In fact, we offer S3 guarantee, which means that any customer who has built their applications uh, that leverage S3 will seamlessly be able to work with uh, Cloudian. So if they are building an application in Amazon but now want to make sure that the storage resides on-prem and they want to do uh, access to that data, you can do that uh, with Cloudian. We provide the S3 guarantee. We, uh, we have the ability to spot small and grow. And as with any scalable storage platform, it's very important to have multi-tenancy, uh, QoS, billing. This is something that our partners, like in our service providers that we have today on our call today with us, think on. This is something that enables them to create that storage as a service, right? You know, it, has, it presents a very simple UI, so now you can have a single uh, FTE that can manage petabytes of data. Um, and you can also do policy-based data protection. So not only just do it on one side, but also have an integrated DR. You can make sure that you dictate policies at a bucket level so that you can make sure that uh, you get the highest uh, bang for the, for the buck that you're spending with Cloudian. And uh, we do understand that a lot of these applications are still accessing data through traditional uh, file protocols. So you now have an ability to do that on Cloudian as a single entity which can support file as well as object. So these are the key features that will be needed for you to succeed when it comes to managing this growth and the scale uh, that you need. Um, a little bit about uh, when we say simple, right? You know, we offer a very simple dashboard that not only just gives you a, a view into where where you are with your storage capacity. It's very simple, non, um, um, and can support non-disruptive capacity expansion. So anytime you talk about scale out storage platform, it's about uh, just be able to do that seamlessly without having to migrate data or up, uh, upgrade uh, uh, and cause the disruption into your environment, right? You know, um, you are not just talking about simplicity in terms of managing through the dashboard, but also having robust APIs that can be used to script. Uh, we are living in the age of APIs, so we are talking about RESTful APIs, we are talking about APIs that you can use to uh, get alerts as well as be able to automate certain aspects of uh, lifecycle data management that uh, aligns with your requirements. Uh, when you talk about scale, as I mentioned earlier, you're talking about growing with your needs, right? You know, oftentimes you're going to be in a situation where you say, okay, I, need, I right now have a need for like maybe say 100 terabytes or 200 terabytes. But uh, as we see in that initial chart that I showed you, the rate at which the data is generated is going to grow exponentially. And you don't want to be in a situation where you have to re-architect your environment and be able to figure out how are you going to manage this growth? Uh, you can do that simply by adding nodes without having to ever migrate your data. And it still looks like one single entity. Uh, so now you have an ability to maintain those access points, grow your environment um, in terms of performance as well as in terms of capacity. All this seamlessly and non-disruptively. Um, so, just a little bit of uh, what are the use cases we see. I talked about uh, the primary use case, and that's the reason why we are having this, is to do storage as a service, right? You know, the ability to do multi-tenancy, uh, billing, QoS, but we also are prime candidates uh, for um, backup as a service, right? You know, we, we work with most of the applications, backup applications that you have, in your existing environments, so it seamlessly plugs into your existing environments without having to change your backup uh, workflows or archiving workflows. 
and to do that uh, in a very cost-effective way, right? You know, why um, why pay for those premier disk-based storage which charge you arm and a leg when you can get this thing done in a very uh, robust, uh, uh, scalable solution which costs uh, significantly lower, right? As I mentioned, uh, uh, the media files and supporting those media files is one of the main growth areas when it comes to managing that petabytes of data and you need something not only just uh, that can store that data but also make sure that that data is available between different sites because of all the production work that needs to happen in this industry and last we talked about uh, file access we do understand the lot of storage still exists out there that is file based storage but that storage is still um, if you look at it in your traditional filers uh, or your tier one NAS storage, 60% of the data is not even touched for years. You can easily move that storage into a Cloudian based storage as a service with the local service providers like ThinkOn or, or an on-prem storage so that you can get the value of this in, in terms of economics and simplify the entire life cycle. Um, Last but not the least, we are now talking, one thing if I want you to take out of this is when you think about Cloudian is think about what I just talked about, uh, the management of your unprecedented growth, management of uh, the unstructured data and simplicity with this. You're talking about now uh, literally an infinite storage that can give you infinite possibilities, which is very easy to manage and grow, which has the richest features Sets and is proven in deployments worldwide, right? And this is the foundation that uh, that uh, offers uh, services like uh, what our partner today wants to uh, will go into. So with that, I I will hand over the mouse um, the presentation to Doug, who will talk a little bit about what they have done with Cloudian and the services that they offer. Thanks. Uh, hi guys, I'm Douglas Henderson, and I'm the uh, one of the sales managers here at ThinkOn. Uh, so we're going to go over exactly what we use Cloudian for here at ThinkOn. So ThinkOn is a channel-oriented cloud provider. Um, we have six data centers across North America, allowing our partners and subscribers to focus on which data centers and which cloud services meet their needs. Uh, we have over 35 years of infrastructure knowledge uh, at our company. Um, currently, we have over two pet petabytes of information that we're managing through these six data centers and year over year we've been doing over 100 percent growth uh, in actual storage uh, which is pretty great and our investors are incredibly happy about that uh, think on currently is working with 65 plus partners in north america and we range from really locally small focused uh, vendors all the way up to some of the top 50 value-added resellers in north america so Kind of just a quick overview of ThinkOn and our key services. Um, so we have four broad categories that we kind of take everything and put under. So we have ThinkOn understand what they are. So the first is hosted applications. Next is backup as a service. Then we have disaster recovery as a service and data archiving. So hosting applications, uh, very straightforward. It's uh, multi-tenanted or dedicated private cloud um, hosting similar to your Amazon, uh, AWS, and and other such uh, services. Backup as a service is where we uh, integrate primarily with leading vendors such as Veeam, Commvault, Veritas, and uh, use that backup software to actually uh, enable cloud um, backing up a cloud storage uh, of the backup so you can free up your on-premise uh, storage for more production and more important needs. And then disaster recovery, um, similar uh, methodology to backup, uh, but we can also work with current cloud vendors that customers is dealing with or because we have multiple uh, cloud sites we can actually do disaster recovery between sites uh, so you can have that geo redundancy and then finally data archiving which is what I'll be talking about mostly uh, for the remainder of this presentation and Cloudian is our SV compliant we call it object storage uh, that runs on Cloudian technology um, really cost effective super easy to configure and use uh, and it's one of our uh, fastest growing services that we're currently providing so um, when we were asked to do one of these webinars, the question was why Cloudian and why uh, ThinkOn wanted to choose Cloudian. So 
one of the biggest things for us is um, we have multiple services. So ease of use and ease of maintaining and managing and uh, planning capacity is really important for us as we sign on new partners and bring in new customers. On top of that, it can run on any uh, X64 environments, which makes it completely hardware vendor neutral, which is important for ThinkOn because we're not actually linked to any hardware vendor. Um, so as we grow and as our needs and our partner needs changes, we want to have the ability to easily move into um, what services, what features, and what vendors work best for us. So having Cloudy and have the ability to align with a lot of uh, vendor hardware out there makes them a, a seamless option for ThinkOn. On top of that, um, you've heard about it a bunch already, but Cloudy is 100% S3 compliant. Uh, and most of the customers, if not all the customers we have seen that have come to think on are looking for those S3 compliant protocols. Uh, so we needed an object storage that could fit in with those needs, um, whether it's for the hardware side of things or the software side of things. S3 really seems to be the leading force when it comes to uh, this type of storage. And then finally, kind of touching on the S3 is that um, most vendors, whether they're software or hardware, HP, Commvault, IBM, Hitachi, are actually building in to their um, technology, whether it's hardware or software, the portals to access the S3. So by us having a technology that's really simple, almost plug and play for our customers to enable use into the cloud, um, was a feature that we were really looking for. We've used other vendors in the past, and a lot of them just weren't up to date, and there's a lot of workarounds we had to come up with for our customers and partners to use these features. Clouding, we've never had an issue, and my engineers, as I said at the start here of this slide, love the fact that it's easy to manage, easy to control, and great for capacity planning. So. Uh, from my perspective as a salesperson, Cloudin has helped me sell more, and from my operations and engineering side, it's allowed them to have more time to focus on more important things. So it's a win-win across the organization. Um, so where do we position Cloudian and our object store? Uh, our primary focus is on long-term data retention, and this can either be for compliance purposes, maybe your, uh, your client's a healthcare, a financial institution, uh, could be a law firm, or it could be own personal business needs. You guys might, might have your own restrictions and rules that you've created as your business has matured, and so you need to hold data for a long period of time. Uh, that's where Object Store really comes in to play. It's a great option to replace tape while still getting a lot of benefits of having your data reside on disks. Um, so you can actually you know, pull it back, recall it, look at it, use it. Uh, with tapes, they just kind of sit off in the middle of nowhere, and um, you know, really they only are used in the worst case scenario and many of the times it might not even work. Um, with Cloudian's APIs, we've been able to work with a couple of end users specifically with their unique applications and allow them um, to have a lot more functionality and a much more robust application while still keeping their costs down. So the two examples we have here are snow plowing and emergency. So we have a company uh, in Canada that uh, uses uh, an app and a geo geo app to track the snow plows across Ontario and figure out what routes they're doing, where the snow is uh, accumulating the most, if routes need to be redone, and then all that information and data is actually stored and pulled from the object store. So um, it's constantly uh, pulling and pushing data while still remaining on a very uh, cheap and robust uh, storage platform. Uh, for the emergency procedure app, uh, we have a company that sets up kind of your your um, best to do's, your, uh, I guess, emergency procedures for things like if someone has a heart attack, if someone's, um, you know, choking on something, if there's a fire, and they've built their own videos uh, that kind of go through step by step of, you know, what's best practice. And those videos are sitting currently on our Cloudian object storage and then are pulled directly onto their app. Um, where anyone can watch them and, and view and stream them, so to speak. Um, on top of that, some end users like to use Object Store similar to like a file level database. Um, so kind of what I, I'm touching on is, uh, you know, it, it might just be storage, but there are a lot of use cases that people uh, have figured out for Object Store that can benefit the, not only their business needs, but their bottom line. And the final point is it's incredibly cost effective. And on top of that, it's charged purely on usage base. And from a ThinkOn perspective, we just charge based on the per gigabyte level of data being consumed. So 
uh, partner use cases and benefits. Um, so we have a mid-sized partner in the West um, that created a very simple backup offering that they've been selling to businesses. And in the last quarter alone, they actually added 25 clients. Um, best part for us to think on was they, I don't think called or even emailed us. Uh, they would just place orders uh, and their credentials would be supplied very quickly and away they would go. Um, on the flip side, our large resellers, some of those big vendors where they have, or big bars, sorry, where they have, you know, a lot of agreements and a long history with established um, vendors like HP, IBM, uh, they really like it for the S3 protocols and the fact that they can, you know, enable a cloud aspect while not displacing some of their key vendors. Um, so like, you know, if someone sells some uh, EMC product, you can still fire in some cloud to increase the growth of their data over time. Uh, so you're still help, helping out EMC and you're still helping out the customer. So that's where our larger resellers are really focused. And then on, on the very opposite end, we have an IT consultant who has used our object store to help with his customer base, basis backup needs. Um, and he set it up so it can just be a set, forget it. Um, and that allows him to still, you know, focus on time of growing his customer base, handling their support issues while having this service that, uh, you know, brings in more money for him. Best part of it of it all is that we've received no calls from him and uh, limited emails on a couple of questions uh, as he's continued to grow. So, you know, it's, it's a win across all three kind of partner sizes. Um, and then, yeah, so um, kind of one of the benefits that ThinkOn provides to our partners, which makes their life a little bit easier, is our Compass tool. Uh, and it's a tool that uh, our partners can use to check their usage, uh, they can generate reports for usage. They can build quotes um, for clouding services or other services. And um, and then they can use this information to help with explaining services, features, or even you know invoices and bills to their customers. Um, uh, the great thing too is partners are able to create an object store bucket uh, immediately at any hour. And on top of that, we don't set any limits to the number of buckets you're created. So if you're that IT consultant and it's 5 a.m. in the morning and you want to create another bucket for a new customer or maybe just an additional, feel free. If you're a large enterprise um, company and you're signing five or six or 20 or 30 customers a day, you can log in and create as many buckets as you want uh, with no interaction from ThinkOn other than making sure that our portal is up. Um, on top of that, you're only going to get billed by ThinkOn if there's actual data residing in the bucket linked to you. So, you know, using that large partner example, if you create five buckets, but you end up only sending one to a customer and they start dumping in data, then you're only going to get one bill for that one bucket. The other four will just remain, you know, created, but if nothing gets placed in it, then there's no reason for a bill to be generated. Compass is our partner portal. It allows for a much faster quote to cash process. You can build quotes. You can track service orders. Uh, you can see the customers that are currently using our ThinkOn services or have used our services. Um, there's also notification, notifications and usage that's all generated from Compass. Um, and your invoices are directly pulled from the Compass tool. So when you get an, an invoice from ThinkOn, it's pulled from the same tool that you have access to. Um, the great thing as well with it is we have the ability to make Compass a, a customer facing portal so we can brand it for the partner's image that they're looking for uh, to help speed up that quote to cash process. Um, our demo that I'm about to do is gonna be just focused around creating objects or buckets because I mean, really that's the reason you guys got on this call was to understand Cloudy and think on and you know, how you can use S3 to boost your storage needs. If you have more questions or, and are interested in getting a full Compass demo, you know, follow up with us afterwards uh, and we can give you the entire rundown of all the features with uh, Compass. This is uh, what Compass looks like when you log on. Very simple, very easy. You know, we're not trying to, uh, you know, recreate the wheel here. And uh, for this demo, uh, what we'll do now is we'll go to Object Store. We'll create a bucket. And so like I said, at any point, you could create a bucket, whether it's 5 a.m. in the morning or 2 p.m. at night. So the bucket has been created. You'll see the bucket URL right here at the top, HTTPS bucket to dash Barney's. And then we can hide show owner key pair. So right here, these first three lines, the bucket URL, the access key and the secret key, that's all 
that we need to provide to our partners or our customers for them to have S3 um, protocols to fire it into whatever they're looking for, whether it's a software uh, technology or hardware technology. Um, so I guess my five minute demo only took about one minute. If you want to regenerate the owner key pair, you can. Uh, so this is if um, you know the bucket was given incorrectly or maybe the uh, end customer has a security issue and wants to make sure that uh, no one has access and now new access keys and secret keys are created. On top of that, there's storage usage. Currently it's being loaded um, because obviously this bucket was just created. So we'll, we'll show you that aspect as well. So we'll go to view buckets. As you can see, storage use, there's 492.6 megabits. Uh, if we scroll down, we even have a graph. Um, we'll do it for the last month. Uh, this bucket has pretty much for the last month had that amount of data, but if you gave a new bucket, uh, to your customer today and let's say tomorrow started ingesting you would even if you change it to last month or to the week you would see a line graph created based on the amount of data that they are ingesting or removing um, so it's a nice way to track as well um, and on top of that if you want you can also build reports uh, which we'd be happy to show you uh, later on on a separate uh, call like i said reaching out to think on and show you the full gambit of compass but really this was just to show you how quick and easy it is for us and for our partners to create quick object store buckets to provide to their customers to facilitate uh, a service and a need. And as this entire uh, meeting was scheduled to, to say, to easily increase your revenue boost with uh, S3 storage. So thank you, um, Douglas and Sanjay, for your presentations today and to our audience for their time today. Um, we do have some time for questions. What are the steps required to be a SyncOn partner? Yeah, so um, it's really straightforward, actually. It's probably the easiest partner uh, setup, I would say, for any vendor. What we require is the company's legal business name and the company's legal address. From there, we provide you with uh, our MSA and schedules you can read through. And if you like what you see, you sign off, send it back to us. And at that point, you're a full SyncOn partner, and you have the ability to use any of our services at any one of our uh, cloud data center locations. So there's no financial commitment whatsoever. Uh, another question uh, is in, if we have an application that can talk S3, will we be able to leverage Cloudian Think On services for our use case? Yeah, so as I showed on one of the other uh, slides, the customer with the Snowplow app and the other one with emergency procedures, they're all using S3. Uh, we can even go deeper. We have a couple of developers here who can help with your APIs to actually integrate into the specific application you have. Uh, so we can kind of talk you through some of the practices that we've been using with our Compass uh, portal. Uh, if they're trying to do something similar or unique, and, and we can make sure that whatever they're trying to do is actually seamless and easy. The whole point of Object Store is it, it should be pretty straightforward once it inks up. Yeah, and I think uh, to just uh, add on to this, Piece, as I mentioned earlier in my portion of these slides, um, one of the things that uh, Cloudian does offer is the the highest compatibility when it comes to S3 APIs, right? So we do have a program uh, where we can guarantee uh, that any application that you have, um, but Again, as Doug mentioned, like you know, ThinkCon provides value-added services to make sure that those applications uh, seamlessly integrate with the platform that they have built uh, using Cloudian. So, uh, next question is, how would we leverage Cloudian for our DR use case? How would that work? So, um, from a pure product perspective, the way Cloudian scale-out architecture works is you have now an ability to deploy a Cloudian cluster uh, in a single uh, highly scalable uh, uh, storage cluster uh, with uh, single access points, right? The underlying uh, cluster uh, has, uh, you can deploy this within a single site uh, or a single region or across multiple data centers. Uh, what, what that means is uh, when data comes in, uh, you can create storage policies on Cloudian that uh, uh, that says that you need a replication factor or erasure coding, and Cloudian makes sure that that data is spread within the different nodes 
irrespective of where the nodes are residing, be it in a single data center or multiple data centers. With respect to the services, I think uh, uh, it depends with ThinkCon um, in terms of how they have offered their services. Those should be completely transparent uh, and they can offer an integrated services. Right now, the focus is uh, uh, you can do a lot of things. It depends on the use cases, what you want to do and how you want to go about it. So the next question, are there any benefits of having a point-to-point -point connection with S3 storage service? I, yeah, I can take that. So uh, the biggest benefit with point-to-point -point is if you are, um, I guess, ingesting or, or dumping a lot of data into your object store, to your Cloudian bucket, then having a point-to-point -point means that it'll free up your bandwidth and uh, your other network uh, for your other applications. So you can really focus. So in one of our examples, if you're doing a lot of backup and replacing tapes, having a dedicated line means you have a, you know, a specific speed and an area that you can uh, saturate the pipe only for your object store. So it, I would say that most of the customers who look at doing that are very large customers or customers that have a high demand of data that they need to get as quickly as possible into a cloud a bucket. Next question is, could you please brief us on data security and if the connection to the storage is redundant? Yes, we'll take that. I've got uh, Pat here, my other engineer. Sure. Um, so yeah, my name is uh, Patrick. I'm a software developer here at uh, uh, ThinkCon. Uh, so in terms of security, um, you'd be because it's using the S3 protocol, you're looking at uh, what Amazon's giving you for over the wire transfer, and that so that's the uh, that's uh, the V4 um, signature that is like uh, an RSA encryption over you know your username and password or your access key and secret key. So in terms of you know um, your credentials getting sniped, um, it's it's pretty much impossible. Um, in terms of uh, your your um, actual data going over, I think there's a way to ask Cloudian to do you know uh, transferred encryptions. Um, so, and then in terms of data redundancy, um, as as, um, as Andrew mentioned, you know, you can we can set it up such that you know your data can reside in potentially multiple locations. Um, so generally, yeah, the best pra or the standard practice for clouding is to have three copies of every piece of data, so that in you know, time of crisis, there's really um, you know, no uh, hiccups at all with what the end customer is experiencing. So generally, um, we've got all of our base covered there. Yeah, and, and just adding to what Pat was saying, um, if you're using uh, vendor technology, whether it's a software for backup or hardware, a lot of times those already have encryption options. So if you're using something like, let's say, uh, Commvault, you have the ability to encrypt the data even before you actually send it towards um, your object store cloudian bucket. So not only are you getting the encryption from that vendor, you're then getting the encryption that Pat talked about to the S3 pro protocol. So it's almost a double whammy for you. Okay, great. Um, and another question, how does the incoming outgoing traffic work with object storage? So from a ThinkOn's perspective, uh, just from billing, we actually charge for incoming and outcoming uh, data. Um, so you know you can uh, dump as much data as you want. And you can retrieve as much, and it's already built into our cost model. Uh, we just find that with uh, a lot of these other cloud providers, that these kind of hidden costs or uh, difficult to track down costs um, become a headache for not only the partners but the end customers. Built that into our solution. Okay. Great. Yeah. I think and uh, and what Cloudian is in this particular case is just uh, the provider of that infrastructure that enables uh, ThinkCon. So, and however they want to offer the services and bills, right? You know, we have a, the ability to track uh, the data coming in, data out, so those kind of stuff. So, with that, um, thank you guys for your time, and we'll give you back some uh, some minutes of your day. <laughs>